Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Excalibur Data Systems Roundtable Tech Talk. I am Mike Fuson. Uh, this is part of our extended Tech Talk series with our friends from Halo. Tom Petley is joining me today. Tom, thanks for joining me. Brilliant. Thanks for having me back, Mike. Absolutely. Uh, it's always fun to get together and talk Halo and uh, all of the fun things you guys are doing. And one of the topics that, that we've been talking about uh, with a lot of customers recently is automations. Leveraging your Halo solution to be able to automate certain activities within the organization, uh, whether that be you know via uh, one of the integrations or other automations uh, that Halo offers. Tell us a little more, bit more about what, what you're seeing out there uh, and what you guys are, uh, have been seeing with, with uh, automations. Yeah, I think automation is one of those topics where kind of everyone loves the idea of it. everyone kind of think, oh, we can automate kind of all my work, um, kind of take away those mundane tasks. But in reality, people don't do that often because they're, I don't know if they're scared of it or if it, they're worried it takes too long or um, anything like that. So for me, you gotta be clear about what, what you're trying to automate, which part of it, because there is different, automation means different things to different people. Um, so just a few examples, kind of away from the, the traditional kind of automation stuff, I'd, I'd say a good example is automating the triage process. You could automate the assignment, very, very straightforward, um, based on the categorization, the service that's impacted. You can automate that and you can take away that triage step and you can automatically assign it to the right person. That's a really kind of tangible win that saves a lot of time. It goes to the right person. You've got a proper process there. Um, and yeah, it sounds very basic, but it's something that not a lot of companies don't often do. It's something people kind of steer clear of um, because the word automation sounds really scary or um, too complicated. Um, you've then got other elements of automation, which is for me, things like um, kind of on an onboarding uh, request kind of automating the generation of different tasks. And that's something that's really important as well, because you can then have multiple different people working on this task at the same time. You can have that whole process structured in there and um, and create that transparency with the users and as well. Um, and also those tasks are different teams as well. So if you are using it in that enterprise service management capacity, you can have your HR teams working on tasks. You can have your IT teams working on different tasks and all that kind of stuff. And then the kind of, Moving it further to the, um, I'd say, more complex layers of automation are when actually those tasks get automated. So you, when you automatically create those users in AD, um, or if you an access request, they automatically get access uh, added to a, an AD group or something based on maybe an approval or something like that. Um, so that's all different kind of components. And what I say to people when they're looking at automation is you don't have to do it all at once. It's something that you can start you can start with creating the manual tasks and you can kind of start to automate the actual um, kind of orchestration or not say of those tasks as well. Is that kind of similar thing to you finding Mike? Yeah, absolutely. And, and we've seen it um, over time um, start to get extended as organizations, just as you uh, described, they kind of crawl, walk, run, fly, right? Mm, yeah. um, as they, they build those things up. And what we've seen with a, with a few of our customers um, is they've done things like uh, building standard uh, configurations for servers. And they, it could be a VMware environment, it could be a uh, you know, Hyper-V environment, and they've got core standard organizational configurations that are already built, uh, already locked down, you know, already secured, uh, and it, that that's a kind of a level, uh, you know, they take it, they, they get that done, right? And you think about that, that's kind of an automation because now the server person isn't going out and building the server. Mm -hmm. They're going out and going ahead and using that template and saying, spin this thing up and here's what I want to mm -hmm. call it. Uh, and then from there, there may be some tweaking depending upon the particular application. Um, but you can have a server stood up very very quickly it doesn't it, you know it, it doesn't necessarily have to go through as much of vetting because it, the template's already been vetted and then we see organizations start to move to okay now we're going to have a request type of request a server <laughs> yeah and if that request is approved it's going to kick off an automatic uh initiation to have vmware spin that server up 
because we've mm -hmm. we've got certain information that we've asked for them to provide. Um, mm -hmm. That's all been vetted um, and approved, and then now the server engineer doesn't have to go spend that up. And, and I think automations what scares people sometimes is, oh my gosh, um, you know that's part of my job. And I, and I think what, what we really see, what we see high-performing organizations doing is that they're taking those mundane tasks, those things that are really, in my mind, time sucks, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'll take an automation that, that we've been doing for years, mailbox size increases, Okay. right? It's an example I use all the time when, when this type of conversations come up. When you think about it, there are occasions where somebody needs to request a larger mailbox because maybe uh, as the, the, the as the system is out there, you've limited mailbox sizes mm -hmm. um, and they're hitting that mailbox limit for one reason or another. Now, you can have a request process that, that goes through and they give their reasoning for why I need a bigger mailbox. And if that's approved, the mailbox size can be increased. Now, those of us that have played with Exchange, it's not super hard. We could give a set of instructions on a piece of paper of how to increase the mailbox size. It's not difficult, but it's gonna take you two to five minutes, depending on how, how well the interface is responding to go through and do that. Or you dig into your little bag of tricks and you have uh, the, PowerShell the PowerShell code already written and you just pop a couple things in and increase the mailbox size. It's not hard. It's something the exchange guys can do, but you know, they may get in a, in a larger organization two or three or 10 of these a week. Mm -hmm. And each and every one, they've got to stop whatever else it is they're doing, go over and do this, shift. Now that that's done, go ahead and complete the request out and then move on to whatever else it was they were working on. When you start to take these everyday mundane things that can really be scripted, in, in this particular instance, mm -hmm. PowerShell scripts abound for doing all kinds of changes in Exchange. Exchange is always a kind of a, a, a place to start. Yep. Now it's only going, they only have to interact with it if it kicks out one because it returned an error code. Mm. You know, and, and it's, go, it's going to kick about one out of every hundred back yeah. because it's That's Microsoft. Of, yeah, it's one of the, one of those kind of key integrations that people do with Halo is that PowerShell integration. Mm -hmm. um, because you people often have those scripts already written which they run mm -hmm. manually like you say pop in a couple of parameters and kind of run it and it goes away and does it what you can do actually is have the the users fill them out they might drop pick a drop down pick their mailbox um pick an option for the size increase and suddenly we've got that information already there mm -hmm. you can have a validation process as part of that approval as well but once that's been hits the approval button um goes off and runs that script pass those parameters in brings that the the code the success or the failure and then if it's success you can you can often just have it automatically close off exactly you know, <laughs> it, 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 exactly it, 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 and so when i when i hear that fear come out wait a minute this is part of my job hmm. yes but if we give you more time to do the planning and your analysis and the other things that are more key to your job i mean I, i've talked to exchange admins you know uh for i i go back to you know the the, the, the days we <laughs> Office 365 wasn't <laughs> even, uh, you know, in, in, in Microsoft's, uh, 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 you know, in their vision at that point. And, and back in those days, when, when an upgrade would come out, the administrators would constantly be playing catch up. And, and so one of the things when you look at automations, you know, when you talk about, you know, folks that are in an IT department, so often we're, we're pretty much firefighters. You know, we come on, we come in and we react to things that are there. And when you start to look at automations, you're able to take certain things that are repeatable, the same process every time, build them into a process and then make them proactive. So somebody requests it, it's approved, it gets actioned and then closed. And, and no, no, no IT person had to go in and touch that. They're able to focus on the other thing. Cause I think, you know, everybody that I know in most IT departments, there's never enough time in the day for everything that's going on. Um, and we all need to set aside time to do some training. We need to set aside time to keep our certifications up. You know, there's all these things that we need to do um, to keep, you know, to, to continue to help uh, us help the organization be effective. And when you start to leverage automations, you start to be able to move 
some of those more mundane tasks. Again, things that are not hard to do, but they are time consuming. We start to add up all the time. The time savings can be quite significant um, in, in letting uh, uh, folks, uh, being able to let folks, be it a server engineer or be it the, 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 the email team or what have you, focus on the other tasks that they need to do that are not things that are as easy to make a repeatable process. Yeah, I always think that the more proactive things you can do rather than the reactive things to the organization is going to be in a much better state for that because you're doing things you actually decide to do, you want to do, it's going to make everything better. Um, and the more time you spend reacting to requests and things like that, then the more time, the less time you're able to spend on those things you actually want to time on. Exactly, um, exactly. Um, so, you know, to, to the folks watching, reach out. Tom and I'd love to talk to you about different ways we can use the Halo ITSM platform to automate things within your environment. And, it, and as, as Tom noted, it can really be a crawl, crawl walk, run uh, sort of scenario where you, you kind of start to stage things and you get your process down uh, and you know that it's now going to be repeatable and then shifting that to a fully automated function um, becomes much easier. But basic automation within Halo gives us the ability to capture that particular data which is needed, which makes the person executing its job that much easier, and then moving it to a fully automated way uh, um, you know, can, can, can bring additional value. Uh, uh, certainly to the organization uh, and and let you get let you get the the real uh, as as Rob Gogan from our team would say you know is the juice worth the squeeze this is this is definitely worth the squeeze um, we've seen it over and over when people start to leverage this um, once that 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 automation effort starts going and we start oh we scripted all this stuff off they're they're looking at what else can we do because oh my gosh this is now made things a lot smoother things are certain things are getting done more quickly because they're automated and we don't have to have somebody stop start their activities to automate them 